Hi, this is David Desert of Pankinology. I've always wondered what happens to our white blood cell counts during chemotherapy. After all, we get blood tests before each treatment to make sure they're not too low. But when is it dangerous? All of the time, or just some of the time? In this video, we'll look at that question. Neutrophils are the body's main infection fighters and only live about five days. There was this study to look at the use of Neupogen that took daily blood counts of some lucky participants in a breast cancer study. I was mostly interested in what happens to neutrophil counts between chemotherapy sessions. But since they also looked at the changes when using Neupogen, we'll review the neutrophil counts both with and without Neupogen. First, I'm going to show you a graph of neutrophil counts after a single treatment of chemotherapy. Note that the y-axis is on a log scale. And here are two lines to mark the grade 3 and grade 4 neutropenia levels. If the neutrophil counts are below the grade 3 level when it's time for the next treatment, you may have to have some dose or timing modifications to the treatment. Below the grade 4 level, they'll stop treatment altogether. Neutrophils start out level before the treatment, and the first day after treatment, it spikes up a little bit. I suspect that this is your body's response as it sees some sort of injury. Then the chemotherapy suppresses the new production of neutrophils for several days. It gets quite low, possibly even below what's considered grade 4 or severe neutropenia. You really want to minimize the amount of time spent in neutropenia represented by this area. You need neutrophils to help fight off bacterial infections. At very low neutrophil counts, below 500, you can even become sick from the normal bacteria present in your mouth and intestines. The lowest point here in the cycle is called the nadir. After a few more days, the chemotherapy gets cleared out and the neutrophil counts back towards normal. Ideally, they would get all the way back to normal before the next round. I like to think of these neutrophil counts during chemotherapy as a proxy for other kinds of cells inside your body, like red blood cells, mouth cells, hair follicles, or your intestinal lining. We can't measure how hard your intestinal lining gets hit, but because neutrophils and the small intestinal lining grow at similar rates, I'd guess it follows a similar sort of degradation and recovery cycle. One way to keep your neutrophil counts from dropping so low is to use a growth factor drug to stimulate the bone marrow to produce more blood cells. This same clinical trial measured the neutrophil counts of an arm that used Neulasta one day after chemotherapy. At this point, I want to note that the Amgen Nulasta dosing information specifies the timing of the dose to be at least 24 hours after a dose of chemotherapy, and the next chemotherapy needs to be at least two weeks later. I know not everyone's oncologist seems to follow this timing, but Amgen has looked at some other timings, and the effect is not nearly as good. Up until the day after treatment, when the Nulasta injection is given, the neutrophil counts are the same. Right away, the neutrophil counts jump up. But then as the chemotherapy takes hold, the counts drop again. The drop is not as pronounced and the recovery starts much sooner. The counts rebound even higher than normal and it seems like the body slows neutrophil production until the counts slowly drop back down. The time spent in neutropenia and susceptible to bacterial infection is shortened, and the nadir happens earlier and at higher neutrophil counts. Not everyone's blood cell production happens at the same rate, and even if it does, after a few treatments our bodies may just not be able to keep up with the production. Let's look at what happens if we're not producing neutrophils as quickly. The neutrophil counts drop a little deeper and a little more quickly than above. And the recovery is a little slower. By the time of the next treatment, we may not have even recovered fully back to normal. It's still not low enough to halt a treatment, 
but you can imagine how this would affect the next treatment cycle. Each cycle might recover less and less until we're below the grade 3 or grade 4 neutropenia lines. At that point, the treatments will be delayed. I don't want to sound like a commercial for Nulasta, but it does often appear to be effective at staving off neutropenia for many patients. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how your blood counts might respond to this treatment. And please note that there can be some moderate and severe reactions. This 2016 paper did look at a third treatment cycle using Nulasta, which is what I'm basing this next line on. With lower overall neutrophil production, we can still probably expect a quicker and deeper drop, but the recovery is still strong. I'd expect that even with this boost in production, patients will still get behind and have treatment schedule or dose modifications. These graphs show that our white blood cell counts are lowest several days after treatment with chemotherapy and slowly climb back up. Blood tests taken just before a treatment have actually recovered quite a bit from the lowest point, when we're most susceptible to infections. We saw that an incomplete recovery leads to lower levels that will delay or even halt treatments, and how blood cell growth factor drugs can help. So the next time you're in treatment, you'll know that when you're most at risk. Let's just stay healthy out there.